For me and many others, Logitech has been a go-to brand for computer accessories for a long time. Many of us, including myself, own one of their webcams, keyboards, and or mice. But what you may not know is Logitech is actually behind what might be the most user-friendly live streaming ecosystem we've seen to date. What I'm talking about is Mevo, and while Logitech already debuted this platform with the Mevo Start camera, they've taken it to a much more professional level with the Mevo Core. Now, as a video creator myself, I can confidently say that the Mevo Core is one of the more unique cameras I've seen. This is Logitech's very first Micro Four Thirds camera. It's also their very first camera that features an interchangeable lens system. With all of these firsts, it begs the question, is this a game-changing device, or is it yet another confusing camera in an already very confusing world? That is exactly what I aim to find out, but first, let's take a look under the hood. Now, as I mentioned previously, the camera boasts a micro four-thirds sensor, and it's capable of capturing video at up to 4K 30 frames per second, and live streaming video at 1080 60 frames per second. This is the largest imaging sensor featured on a camera from Logitech to date, and provides a clearer, more professional look than cameras featuring smaller sensor sizes. Turning to the audio for a moment, the camera has three MEMS microphones built in with spatial audio processing for both speech and music. But since most streamers use a separate microphone, they have conveniently included a 3.5 millimeter microphone input on the back of the camera. Furthermore, you get an HDMI output, a micro SD card slot, and two USB-C ports used for both power delivery and UVC. Now, that's all well and great, but where this camera truly comes to life is in the Mevo Multicam app. From the app, you can create multicam live streams or recordings using Logitech's Mevo cameras. It is loaded with features that I could go on for hours about, but instead of talking about it, I'd rather show you. So without further ado, let's check it out. Like all test drives, I wanted to start this one out nice and simple. To do that, I set up a gameplay live stream. The popularity of gaming live streams is massive and ever growing, and I knew that this scenario would allow me to become better acquainted with the camera system under a low stress environment. So I've just finished setting everything up and I'll give you a quick rundown as to what's going on here. I have the Mevo Core set up on a lightweight stand behind the desk and it's plugged into an AC adapter, so I don't really need to worry about battery life or the camera dying on me. The camera is wirelessly sending the signal to my iPad, which is running the Mevo Multicam app. For audio, I'm using the built-in 3MEMS mics for my voice, and I set the audio to prioritize my speech over all other sounds, ensuring that my voice comes through crystal clear. Now in the app, you have several options for output. You can stream to your desired destination directly through the Mevo app. You can also record the program to your iPad. Lastly, you have the option to output the program to any computer on the network. Now this is going to appear as if it's a webcam. Since I already have my streaming overlays in Streamlabs, I'm going to output the program from the app to my computer. That way, all I need to do is replace the webcam I already have set up with the Mevo camera and I'm good to go. So with all this ready to go, I'm ready to start streaming and I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, so I'm about an hour into the stream at this point, and I gotta say, everything is running quite well. Um, I'm really impressed with how everything uh, operates so smoothly, and I just wanted to take a moment to share some of the tools that I have at my disposal here through the app. So if you click on the camera control button in the settings, you're gonna find all of the typical exposure settings that you would have in a regular camera. However, this camera allows you to do just a little bit more. Now, I've chosen to pair this camera with a set of power zoom lenses. And this is gonna allow me to not only control the aperture of the lens, but also the zoom and focus as well. 
And that's significant because normally you don't get that in a lens. And if you wanted to adjust the zoom or focus, you'd have to go and manually do it yourself. But with this camera, you're able to do everything directly through the app, provided you're using the compatible lenses, which, you know, in my opinion is pretty nice considering I can do all of my initial setup in the app before I start streaming and it's good to go. Now there's another feature on this camera that I think a lot of people are going to love and that's the ability to run the video signal out of the camera via UVC. And with that, you just connect the camera to your computer via USB and it'll show up on your computer just like any other webcam would. Okay, I am going to finish up this stream and I will see you guys in a bit. With the first stream using the Mevo Core behind me, I was ready to jump into something a little bit more complicated. The Mevo ecosystem really comes to life when using it for a multi-camera live stream. To test this, I got a second camera and I hit the studio. Okay, so this is our second live stream we're doing with the Mevo Core. And as you know, we're gonna be adding a second camera. And in this live stream, we are gonna be putting together this Lego set because who doesn't like Lego? No, uh, really, I think it's going to be a great showcase for the sort of needs you're gonna have when trying to execute a arts and crafts sort of live stream or you know, even cooking for that matter. So once I get this all set up, I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of what we have going on, so stay tuned. Okay, I am all set up and ready to go here. I have both my cameras on stands. Um, this one is running a 14 to 42 millimeter power zoom lens, same one I was using in the previous stream. And then on my close up camera, I have a 45 to 175 millimeter power zoom lens. Now, just like the other lens, this is going to allow me to control the focus and zoom all remotely through the app. Now, switching to audio for a moment, I am going to be using the built in mics on the Mevo Core to live stream again. And if you're wondering what that sounds like, I'm actually using those mics to record this segment now. So if you're wondering what that sounds like, you're listening to it. After setting up my lighting, I was ready to get started. I think now is a great time to talk about the reason why having a micro four thirds sensor is so beneficial. Now, very generally speaking, a larger imaging sensor will give you more dynamic range and a cleaner image overall. Really, this depends on the size of the photo sites that make up the sensor. But again, generally speaking, a larger sensor features larger photo sites. That is certainly the case when talking about the Mevo Core and comparing it to a Mevo Start a smartphone camera, or even a high-end webcam. A micro four-thirds sensor is significantly larger than the one inch or half inch sensor sizes that make up those cameras. This is how the camera can capture really clean looking video even when zoomed in on dark areas of the image. Furthermore, the app allows you to crop the image and move that crop around the frame to keep the subject composed where you want it. Now, when I was using the crop function, the image still came in clean and relatively noise free. It's really important to remember that you're only outputting in 1080, but capturing the video on a 4K sensor. So when you do use the crop function, or in other words, a digital zoom, you aren't losing any resolution at all with the Mevo Core. You maintain a 1080 resolution, whether you're cropping the image or not. The previous two live streams have been great examples of how these cameras would be used by social media creators, but, these cameras do not fall short when it comes to professional use cases. Now the Mevo Core is capable of outputting NDI, which allows it to send its video signal over the network very efficiently. 
This opens the door for professionals who deal with large networks of cameras and allows them to simply drop the camera into their system without really having to affect much else. And given the fact that the camera can be controlled remotely and it features a box style design with plenty of mounting points, you're really able to position the camera where it doesn't make sense to have a camera operator or even a full-size camera for that matter. Think sports stadiums, uh, houses of worship, theaters, auditoriums, studios, classrooms, um, the list goes on really, but the point is the network features on this camera and its design make it a really powerful tool for professional use cases. Now, I've helped a lot of people shop for and set up video equipment for live streaming and what I see most people gravitate towards are the hybrid mirrorless cameras because of their spectacular image quality. And while manufacturers have made huge strides in recent years to allow creators to use their hybrid cameras for live production, there are many roadblocks we still run into when attempting to use these cameras for this purpose. How are you gonna power the camera? How will you get the video signal from the camera to the live streaming software? Am I too far away from the camera to run an HDMI cable and therefore need to consider wireless adapters? Can the camera record internally and output a video signal at the same time? Will the camera have any issues staying on for extended periods of time? I could go on, but the point here is it's never a good idea to jam a square camera into a round hole. What Logitech seems to have done here is extract everything we love about mirrorless cameras and build a live streaming solution around it. Spectacular image quality, interchangeable lenses, and stress-free functionality. There's a sort of joy that comes along with things that simply work well. The set of tools they've laid out for us allow creators and professionals to focus more on their vision and less on technical workflows and problem solving. And if you ask me, that's exactly the way it should be. We want to know what you think though. Be sure to let us know down in the comments, like the video, and thanks for watching.